everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kayla and it's time to crack into a good book. So it's time for another weekly update and I have five books to talk to you about that I finished this last week. And this is, let's see, I think we've got fantasy, some horror, and thriller. <laughs> there we go. Before we get started, leave a mountain emoji in the comments to let me know that you're here. So we will go ahead and get started working our way from the lowest to the highest. So we'll start at a three-star book and that's Crown of Midnight by Sarah J. Mass. So Basically, this is a YA fantasy, and this is the second in the Throne of Glass series, and we follow Selena, who is now the King's Champion. And basically, everyone is kind of hiding things, and Selena needs to decide where her loyalties lie. So this is an interesting journey. So I really did not like the first Throne of Glass book. I listened to it on audio a few years ago, and I think I gave it two stars or something like that. But I just found it like so boring and I got annoyed because I was like, so supposedly she's this great assassin and I just like didn't believe it at all. So I was like, I don't really want to continue, but I just recently read A Court of Silver Flames and like I do much prefer that series in general. The first book in that series, A Court of Thorns and Roses, is by far the weakest and so I've kind of just been wondering like, was it the same thing with the Throne of Glass series? So. Like, after really enjoying A Court of Silver Flames, I was like, okay, well maybe I should just give Throne of Glass another shot. So I borrowed this from my library. And I will say, I think the first half of this feels extremely similar to the first book with not much happening. But there is a certain event that happens and then things really start to pick up to the point where I'm actually like interested in continuing the story and finding out what happens. I don't know how much I really truly believe in her fantastic like assassin abilities or whatever, but I think you know, especially the ending here, like, it does make me believe it a bit more. So I'm like, okay, there's there's hope for this series. <laughs> I think some of the reveals that we learned here were not particularly surprising. Though I did think one in particular was going to go in a different way. Like, I kind of didn't think she knew it. So that was, <laughs> I'm trying to keep that vague so I don't spoil things. But like, I don't know, I, I kind of thought we would go on a bit of a journey with her learning about these things. I do think we have much more interesting things here in terms of magic, there's witches, there's fae, there's like this creature in this clock tower. Do you think it still has some of the dumb bits with Selena just kind of flouncing around? But generally I think the characters seem much better than the first book. There are some questionable character reactions here that seem a bit extreme, but <laughs> overall and like I don't know the the romance here actually didn't go in the way I expected so I like I kind of like that that came you know I, I didn't feel particularly strongly about that romance anyway so I'm kind of glad that things didn't progress how I expected them to. I am glad that I read this physically instead of listening to the audiobook again because like I read this in just a handful of hours because you know it's, it's a very quick and easy read I think and part of my problem with audiobooks in particular was like it just takes me forever to get through them. So I think reading it physically was a much better decision because I feel like I just enjoyed the experience a lot more. This was a surprise to me. Like I wasn't really <laughs> sure that I would like this. And again, there were some problems with it for sure. But I do think it's much better than the first book. And I am, again, interested in continuing the series now. The next book I'll talk about is a three and a half star book. And that's Thin Air by Michelle Paver. So this is a mountain climbing horror book. So we are in the 1930s and this group of five people are trying to climb a mountain in the Himalayas. They're like trying to follow this route that this 1907 expedition took where five people from that expedition actually died. So basically it's like the higher they climb the darker it gets. To start off it is written like it's like it does truly take place in the 1930s and what I mean by this is that we have a bunch of white dudes who think that they're way better than everybody else so there's kind of like these stereotypical attitudes and certainly racism of that time with some very unflattering descriptions but I will say like the author's note in the back of the book does say that she's like trying to evoke that time period including these like racist attitudes Aside from that whole situation, she also is also trying to be true to this time period with authentic climbing techniques and things like that. So I did appreciate that she mentioned this, like that's what she was going for here. And it does feel like it takes place in the 1930s. It definitely has a slower beginning, but then it starts like creepy things start like start happening. And I think there's a really great buildup of tension here. There's an interesting mystery behind the haunting, and I just really enjoyed the story overall. I think the descriptions of the climb were particularly well done and again in the author's note it kind of mentions how she does how she did some research actually doing some of these things I think not only climbing but also like in this particular location so it feels really realistic 
it definitely is feels cold and you know isolated and atmospheric so I think that was really well done there are a lot of tense character dynamics here especially with this sibling rivalry between the two brothers so we do follow Steven who is the main character and he feels like he's the outsider in this group with only like a dog that they find along the way to really keep him company I did get annoyed with him at times I think because of his attitude but in general he does seem to be pretty nice overall I think he is a doctor and he is just like generally trying to take care of all the members of this expedition and he's also just like trying to get out of the shadow of his older brother which I think is understandable I think this was a really great like horror climbing story and like this is a particular subgenre that I really love but it's like super hard to find anything that's in this area this is a very similar premise to the white road by Sarah Lotz and I do think I prefer that book but again like <laughs> there's not many options in this subgenre so like I'm super happy just to get anything and this was quite enjoyable so now we'll move to the four star books and the first one I'll talk about here is Blood of Empire by Brian McClellan so Lena from Sufficiently Advanced Lena and I buddy read this and this is an adult flintlock fantasy and this is the third book in this follow-up trilogy to the Powder Mage trilogy and basically we have this final battle over the godstones and we've got you know things like invasions rebellion and political schemes going on so I did like this overall I mean obviously I rated it four stars I think it is a solid conclusion to this series and the world in general. I think I had seen that this is the last time we're going to get anything in this universe, which kind of makes me sad because I do really like this. I think it's pretty well paced overall, though I did start to wonder in the middle and like kind of towards the end just how everything was going to wrap up because I was like, oh, you know, like especially I remember distinctly at like 130 pages left, I was like, I don't know how we're going to like wrap everything up in time. I'm not terribly surprised with some of the things that happened but I do kind of wish we had seen more of it and you know I feel like the ending was a little bit too tidy for my taste so I think just spending a little bit more time with this ending would have been better for me however that being said we do get some great you know action and battle scenes so that was that was super fun I think generally his writing is really easy to read and it's easy to get into these books I have really enjoyed them I think the world building is super fun you know I've mentioned how we have three different types of magic here with the powder mages and again they like basically can snort gunpowder and like have heightened reflexes and can like steer bullet trajectories and whatnot. I've got the privilege that are more like elemental mages and then we've got blood mages as well so it's a lot of really great aspects that come together in a really fun magic system. We get some really nice battles and political intrigue here. We do follow three point of view sections so we have Valora who is a general I never know how to pronounce his name I don't know if it's like Michael Michelle Mitchell I don't know he's a spy <laughs> and then we have Ben who is a Lancer so I really enjoy all of them equally I liked Valora here having some like self-realization she's just generally pretty badass I think she's a very strong independent woman and I feel like I have liked her this entire time which I guess is unpopular like I had seen some other people mentioning how they just like really disliked Valora and I was like I seem to remember liking her in the Powder Mage series so I, I don't know maybe that's a, a hot take or something but anyway but then Ben you know I think he is really protective of his people and will do whatever it takes to save them all so he is he's interesting like he definitely has this softer side I think with his ward but also like he's pretty brutal he's just like a, a big powerful dude and he's an interesting mix of characteristics and then our spy he is like trying to fight for the rights of his people and I think he has been interesting to follow because he seems like he doesn't really have any magic or anything like that and you know faced with all of these people who do have these magical abilities like it's I feel like he can kind of get swept under, under the rug some but he's really crafty and particularly good at being a spy so like he has played a surprisingly large part in like the plot of this entire series and so like I, it's just been so much fun to see what all he gets into but yeah so I, like I, I feel very satisfied with the series as a whole like I would definitely recommend it obviously start with the Powder Mage series first because that is like <laughs> that establishes the major events that you need to know before jumping into this Gods of Blood and Powder trilogy. So the next four star book I'll talk about is The Drowning Kind by Jennifer McMahon. So, so I received this for review from the publisher through NetGalley and this comes out April 6th and this is like an adult horror slash thriller. Basically we have 
our one of our main characters, Jax, who gets a call one day that her sister Lexi has drowned in the pool at their grandmother's house. And so she finds out essentially that Lexi has been researching the history of this land and the family. Then we have this other timeline in the 1920s where this couple is trying to have a baby and they end up going to this hotel with natural springs that are rumored to have healing powers. So I think this was really good and creepy. I think it is a bit of a slower burn, but I really enjoyed, I think, the buildup over the t over time with just like learning the history, I think, of the natural spring and just like what all has happened on this land. Using these dual timelines was a really great idea because it does really allow us to, you know, understand the entire history of what has happened and like maybe, you know, a present day timeline, we should be a little bit more concerned about some things. The water uh, has, a, has a darker side. It, it gives, but it also takes. So I think just generally the story has some surprising moments that I definitely didn't expect, but it did keep me wanting to read throughout. In terms of the main characters that we follow, Ethel is the main character for the past timeline and Jax is the main character for the present timeline. So, you know, Ethel, again, def desperately wants this baby and she'll go to any length to have one and care for one. So I, like, she was really interesting. Like, I did definitely felt bad for her at times because, you know, she's very clearly intelligent and cares for her family. But I think a lot of people take pity on her because, you know, she was like the oldest sibling in this family and was married the last. And, you know, like they're trying to have this baby and kind of like struggling with some infertility. So I feel like her struggles were really understandable. Jax certainly has a, like a really hard journey confronting her own behaviors, like regrets and jealousy. I really respect how she wants to be her own person and like not fall under the shadow of her, her sister, Lexi. I think she does try to do what's best for herself and she tries to like distance herself from these like toxic family relationships. So I think she has like a lot of really complex feelings that arise from this and I think it's all really understandable. So I, I did like both of them quite a bit. Generally, this book does go into things like tough family relationships and mental health. There are topics like addiction, bipolar disorder, and in particular with that, I think, you know, we've got a parent kind of refusing treatment for a child. We've got some self-harm, just generally like questioning reality, and there are even more things than that. So like, there are definitely content warnings here, but I really liked how it explored all of these topics, and I think it did so in a really nice way. I think my main complaints here, like obviously I still really enjoyed this book, but I think there were a few plot threads that just weren't as well developed as I would have liked. But again, like I really liked this and I particularly enjoyed these supernatural elements here, so I would not hesitate to recommend this if it sounds interesting to you. So the last book will be a four and a half star book and that's The Helm of Midnight by Marina Lostetter. So I got this for review from the publisher through NetGalley and this comes out April 13th. So, oh my goodness, I'm so excited to talk to you about this. This is an, a dark adult fantasy where essentially we have this regulator who must track down a missing mask that has been imbued with the spirit of a serial killer. He has to do this before more people die. So this was just so awesome. Like I figured just from the synopsis, like a supernatural serial killer, I was like, all right, I'm already on board here. But like, this was just so much more than I could have even imagined. I had seen it described on Goodreads, I think, as the silence of the lambs meets Mistborn. And I think that is fairly accurate. You know, we do have some dark themes here. It's all just so good. So in particular, I think the world building is just fabulous here. So basically in this world, we have things like, you know, gems can hold emotions and you can bottle up time. And these things can be kind of used as currency. So you've got people trading time and there's like legal limits for how much you can have. There's taxes on these things as well. So it's just like all super crazy. And then, <laughs> so I mentioned how this mask has been imbued with the spirit of a serial killer. So basically like the personalities and skills of individuals can be like transferred into these masks upon death. And so then like people can later put on that mask and be able to use that skill. So this is super interesting. So we have each mask is kind of, you know, rated based on the different skill levels and strength of these echoes, which are like the personalities. And so sometimes you, you pick up a mask where the, the, there's like a really strong personality that kind of like fights with you for control. So really interesting ideas. And then <laughs> we're not done yet. We also have a variety of materials like metals that store different aspects corresponding to the five different gods. And I think like it does feel like a bit of a medieval setting with how it kind of like goes into like different humors of the body and just like 
I mean, it's just all so cool to see how everything ties in. We also get some really interesting and creepy creatures here, which are just so great. And like everything to do with all of these different magical things was just fantastic. I had mentioned these gods, right? So there are five different gods, including uh, male, female, intersex, and sexless gods. And I think that's how they were described in the book. But the main thing is all of them use different pronouns and it feels really inclusive and diverse. I think characters in this world really take care to not you know, improperly address others by the wrong pronoun and so, you know, so that was great to see. But like it all just feels really natural because especially because it's like built into I think the mythology of this world. And it's also just great to learn more about each of the gods as as we progress. And like this was something I really wasn't expecting, but I wanted to mention it because I think this is going to be really appealing to people. And you know, it's like, oh no, maybe maybe they have a little bit uh, more of a role to play than than people think. So we'll just leave it at that. This is well paced overall, the, the plot kind of unravels slowly over time, and this is not a bad thing at all. Like I think this is a very character driven book rather than plot driven, but we have like a really rich engaging build up of this and it's just like, oh my goodness, it was so great to see everything come together. And like I will admit that kind of towards the end I just started to get a little bit impatient, but generally this was so fun to see how everything come, like builds up. So we do have three different point of view sections here. We have Krona, who is this regulator, and she's kind of like a, the police person type investigator, I guess. We have Charbon and Melanie as well. And I really liked all of these different sections because I think it allows us to get inside of their heads and learn their stories. And these do not all take place at the same time. Several of our characters have to confront and conquer their fears, and generally a lot of them are dealing with some pretty rough situations. Krona in particular has a really severe phobia and she's trying to manage it. She does idolize her sister and I think her journey is really about like finding her own path and like who she is as a person. And just like generally watching her try to fight to overcome like dark feelings and things like that is just fantastic. Charbon, <laughs> I think, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but he was very intriguing and I like seeing the reasons why he does certain murderous things. You know, I think at the end of the day, like he does still do some really evil stuff, like there's no question about that, but I think it's much more complex than I initially expected. Finally, Melanie, I think she is, seems like almost like a case of like being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Her journey is really about trying to heal her mother and she kind of gets embroiled in, in things. Like I said, it's really cool to see how everything comes together because like for a while there I was like, I'm not exactly sure how this is all gonna work, but it does, it just like is so masterful to see how it all mm, intertwines. Oh my god. I think there's a really satisfying conclusion to this story, though there's like obviously much more to be told in this world, especially with the gods. So like I just, oh my god, I cannot wait to find out what happens next. There are dark themes here, like I mentioned. So we've got content warnings for things like, you know, murder, trauma, despair. So, you know, do be aware going into it that it is a dark fantasy, but it was just so good. And I feel like it just has so much appeal for so many people. So like definitely recommend this one. Okay, so now that I have finished my very long review for that book, those were all the books that I have finished since last time, and I'm currently reading Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough. So, like, clearly I got this at a used bookstore. We've got, like, stickiness going on here. But this is some sort of thriller. This is a very, like, polarizing book. We have Louise, who, we, who meets her new boss, and turns out, like, she met him at the bar the night before, who, and, like, they, they kiss, but he's married. Louise ends up meeting her, his wife, and basically, like, they all start to, I think, get drawn into each other, and, like, there's, there's something going on with this marriage. I don't really know, but I think I'm about, yeah, I'm about 100 pages in. It's, it's good so far, and I'm curious to see what all happens here. In terms of what I'm going to read next, you know, I've been making my way through the Battle of the Books bracket. Like, I've had to shuffle some things around with, like, library holds and review things coming in. So I think what I'm probably going to do is go over to the, like, urban fantasy side of things and do either, I think it's Burned that I have by Benedict Jacko. And I also have just got a copy of The Solstice Countdown by Lisa Sheeran, which is the latest book in the SPI files. She sent it to me for review and I'm really excited to read it. So I probably will make my way over there or perhaps like in the sci-fi side of things. So we shall see. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books or think you might pick them up. For your question of the day, what kind of magic systems do you like? <laughs> do you like systems where we've got multiple different types of magic? 
So I do have a Discord channel, and if you want to join that, the link is in the description below. I hope you're all having an excellent day and are reading something awesome. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a big thumbs up, as that would certainly help me out. But with that, I think I'm going to wrap it up here, and see you in the next one.